Well, g'day, curd nerds. G'day, curd nerds. Well, 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 g'day, curd nerds, and welcome to Ask the Cheese Man. This is where you can ask your home cheese making questions and I will attempt my very best effort at trying to answer them. Uh, right, cue the cheesy music. Right, there we go. This is episode 220. That's amazing. As always, I'm amazed by what I get out of bed on a Sunday morning, early on a Sunday morning to do this. Oh, just craziness. All righty. Um, Thank you to all the financial members of the channel. Uh, new member, YouTube member, Grant Fritch. Thank you, Grant, for your young membership. And we have new tiers of membership now. Uh, YouTube have made them available for me, which is fantastic. Now, before I go any further, I'm Gavin Weber, and I'm the Chief Curd Nerd and host of the show. And we are live on YouTube, Facebook, LinkedIn, and Twitch, all at the same time, the miracle of modern technology cool uh also on patreon just thank you to everybody all the members uh on patreon who support the show as well um yeah very cool now uh videos that are coming up this week uh i have uh in post-production erst karka which is a swedish curd delicacy uh, and Erstkaka simply means cheesecake. So it's a Swedish cheesecake uh, and it's made with curds. So you have to make some curds first and then mix a few other ingredients in and it all works very well and tastes amazing. So, uh, and there will also, I don't know if it's this week or, or maybe um, early next week will be the Graviera taste test video. Uh, that tastes amazing. And the podcast being released this week is the interview interview with uh, Tutu Saad. Um, so I'm just putting the final touches on editing that. So that'll be good fun as well. Now, up and coming videos. Let's just have a quick share of my video production board. Let me just uh, get that up so everybody can see. So uh, this is Trello. Uh, this is the tool that I use to um maintain the workflow of the videos so as i said um erst Karka is coming soon we just did finish squeaky cheese or leaper Justo, uh which was a big hit a lot of people like that which was fantastic um out blossom still maturing so i uh, it's in video shoot mode and pre-production planning i'm hoping next weekend that we will start danbo cheese uh which is uh, a danish cheese uh, it's got a, a slight washed rind uh and uh yeah it should be very nice we'll try that anyway so that's the video production board and potentials that are coming up uh here so that'll be good fun all right let's just uh get rid of that and get back to my face there we are there's my face <laughs> all righty let's say good day to a few people oh and uh don't forget that at uh, 30 minutes past the hour there will be the gallery and we have some lovely gallery photos today Okay, uh, let's say good day to a few people. First cab off the rank was Ruth. Hello, Ruth. Lovely to see you. Um, Patrick. Hello, Patrick. Uh, who else we got? We've got um, Tim the Hammerhead. Okay, so, all right, we had some technical difficulties by the looks of it. Seems to be okay now. Uh, okay, so, lost the audio. Yeah, Dennis, thank you. Um, it should all be good now. So, yeah, it says the bit rate's really slow, so not sure what's going on there, but we'll continue on. 
I'll kill the music just in case it's that. Okay, right. So I'm back. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thanks. It's all good. Yep. We're fixed. Fixed. I don't know what's going on there. Too many things happening at once, probably. Oh, goodness me. Okay. Um, so, oh, back to hellos. Where do I go to? Bill. Ryan. Hello, Ryan. Lovely to see you, mate. The chairman, Judy, Jim, Robert. Uh, we've got Tracy from Cheese Needs. We've got Andrew. We've got Wendy. Hello, Wendy. And Patricia. Hello, Patricia. Um, I don't know. She got a new uh, little icon there going on as well, which is uh, pretty cool uh, for your membership. I, they've got three-year and four-year uh, icons now, so I, I uploaded some new ones. So that's pretty cool. Um, and who else we got? Uh, do, 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 do. We've got uh, Michael. Hello, Michael, and thank you for your photos. I've got those. Um, Titus, uh, Lord Slade One, Karmic Vibes, Dennis. Hello, Dennis. Uh, where else? We got Karen. Uh, bah, bah, bah. Where are we? Do, do, do. Annette, um, Silver, and Crispy McChicken. Lovely. <laughs> We've got everybody. I think that'll do. Uh, but thank you, everybody who's turned up today. It's absolutely fantastic. Um, let's get into some questions. Do I have some questions? I think we do. Um, where is it? Where is that question I saw? Here we are, Lord Slade. You can be the first one. <clears throat> uh, Gavin, what was your first cheese? Uh, what would you suggest somebody to try for their first cheese? Much love from Louisiana. Thanks, Lord Slade. Uh, my first cheese was feta. Um, so that was pretty cool. Um, and uh, yeah, it wasn't really the fetters that I know. Uh, so that was interesting. But uh, the first cheeses, I do have a video called Beginner's Cheeses uh, uh, Without a Cheese Cave. So you can go and check that one out. It's got a list of about five or six different cheeses you can try. But off the top of my head, I uh, go um, paneer ricotta, um, what else? Halloumi. Um, that'll do. Feta's a good one too because you can just mature that in the fridge in the brine. Um, Bel Paese is another one you don't need without a cheese fridge. But there's lots of soft... Oh, queso fresco is another great one. You can eat the same day. Um, and even the uh, the most recent one that I did is... Um, oh, goodness me. What was it? Uh, the... Uh, a leap at use, though. I can't remember how to say it every time. But yeah, there's some suggestions. Um, uh, Cheryl says, uh, making pizza with several homemade cheeses, so I will be popping in and out. Uh, fantastic. Well done, Cheryl, using it. Um, Jim, thanks for your 32 months of membership. It says, greetings, Sir Gavin. I can't, can I show that? Is that coming up? It doesn't come up on the little stream. So unfortunately, I can't do that. So, but thank you, Jim. That's on YouTube only. So in the software that I'm using, I can't show it. Sorry about that, mate. Uh, okay, so next question is from uh, Karen, who's a recent patron. Uh, thank you, Karen. Um, I've just started and have made a traditional cheddar, a red Windsor and a few chowder. The way is milky colour, no matter how lightly I press it first. The gorgonzola I made recently was even milky without present, uh, pressing. Uh, any insight as to what I can do to improve? Well, it, it, uh, it is milky to start with. So as long as it's not flowing as in milk colour, it can be creamy the way. First pressing is always the most delicate, of course. Um, and you do lose a little bit of fat. doesn't matter how hard you press it. But yeah, not to worry. Um, you'll find that when you taste the cheese, it'll be fine. Okay. Um, uh, Ruth says, um, I have to cut out for a while and pick up my poor old car from the shop. I'll hurry back so don't miss me too much. But we will miss you, Ruth. We always do. Uh, okay. Um, next question. 
Uh, Ruth, am I up for three years? Let me just have a look at your icon. Yes, you got the three-year icon, Ruth. I know you've popped out, but yes. Um, and Patricia says, wow, I didn't notice the new icon until you pointed it out. Yep, yep, yep. And there's an even better one for the four years, which a few people are actually coming up. Um, so that's pretty cool. Um, uh, Glenn, hello, mate. How are you? Uh, g'day from Puyallup, Washington. Puyallup? Crazy. I don't know where that is. Well, on the West Coast, I think. Ah, Dr. Casero. Hello, Dietrich. Um, hi, Gav. Long time no see. How about making a show again to answer some questions to your followers and my followers? I would also like to gift you my book, Homemade uh, Venezuelan and Colombian Cheeses. Yeah, that'd be good. Let's organise something there, Dietrich. Uh, Doc do Casero. All right, I'll get in touch this week, mate, and we'll figure something out. How's that sound? Uh, and even a, a podcast would be good too. We'll figure something out. Anyway, um, Titus says, uh, is it possible now to invent or come up with a new type of cheese? I think that's what it says, Sir Gavin. Uh, look, everything's just a variation on a theme. I think as far as tastes goes, um, Look, you can you can make anything really. Um, let me just have a look. There is uh, somebody invented a recipe. Who was it? Oh, it was uh, Tracy from Cheese Needs. Let's. Uh, I don't know where it is, but um, yeah, Tracy invented this yesterday's cheese, which I'm going to try. I've got so many cheeses to try, uh, and it's one that you can eat the next day. Oh, we got a super chat. Who's doing that? Let's have a look. Sorry. Uh, that was Cheryl. Hello, Cheryl. Thank you so much for that. Uh, let's get to that. It says um, $20 US. That's incredible. Um, it says, hi, Gavin. No cheese questions. Just wanted to thank you uh, for your super cheese knowledge. Uh, you're the reason I started making cheese. My hubby love you. My hubby love you. <laughs> oh, all right. Cool. Um, thank you, Cheryl. I appreciate it. But $20, that's huge. Okay, um, next question is from doo -doo -doo -doo. Let's have a look. Um, oh, statement, Tracy says, I've been marinating yesterday's in herbs and oil. Do you have any favorite marination combinations? Uh, yeah, definitely rosemary. I also use some pickling spices. We get them in a packet here in Australia. Um, so it's um, it's got juniper berries, peppercorns, mustard seeds. Uh, I think it's got some fennel. So it's just in a packet and it's called um, pickling spices. And that's what I, I actually, uh, in those, um, in the marinated feta, I put... Uh, fresh rosemary and fresh thyme, straight from the garden, plus these pickling spices, and they, um, and it it just tastes amazing. It's just fabulous flavour. So that that's what I do. Um, next questions from Hammerhead Chef, uh, aka Tim. Thanks, Tim. Um, question: I've been wanting to make burrata or mozzarella style cheeses. I'm a bit hesitant. I think it's the stretching and hot way aspect. Any advice before getting started? Yes, my advice is to get some thick rubber gloves. So get some some decent, uh, you would have seen all the videos, including the intro that um, you would have seen at the start of the show where I was stretching some quick mozzarella there. Um, I had some heavy gloves on. So heavy, heavy rubber gloves uh, or latex gloves or whatever, um, they help immensely and you don't get burnt because uh, it is very hot. Uh, the hot way and all that sort of stuff. Um, or even if you do the microwave method, the curds get very hot. So, yeah, look, that's that's my advice. But just have everything prepared. So just have it all prepared and you're all good to go. And, yeah, get into it. Stretch that curd. So pasta filata cheese. There's so many different types uh, that you can make. And, uh, yeah, they're all good fun. Okay. Okay. Um, 
I don't know how to pronounce it. How do you say Kasaba? I think that's how you say it. Hi, Gavin. I'm from Hungary. My asking is, what can I use an Arto instead? Um, okay, so uh, Nato is pretty simple to get hold of. Um, there are many, many cheese baking stores in the EU. Um, and I'm sure there's something in um, in Hungary. So there's got to be an online cheese store somewhere in Hungary. Um, but an Arto is uh, fairly simple to get hold of. Uh, and you can even soak the seeds um, and uh, make the solution yourself if you really want to. Um, but yeah, it's readily available. Uh, as far as a substitute goes, um, if you're using raw milk, you probably don't need it. Um, if you're going to make something like a cheddar or something like that, then um, you're going to get a, a fairly rich color anyway uh, if you're using raw milk. So uh, it's when you use pasteurized, homogenized milk, um, then that's when the uh, beta carotene is a little bit less. But yeah, the fresh raw milk, you shouldn't have too many troubles with color on your cheese anyway. What they used to do is um, uh, they even used to add carrot juice, marigold flowers, all sorts of things to make it look uh, richer and darker. Okay. Um, Glenn says, have you ever made cheeses with flavoured milk, such as chocolate queso blanco, for instance? Um, no, uh, but people have, and they've told me that um, the cheese tasted bitter, especially if it was made with chocolate milk. Um, but yeah, it doesn't blend much to it. Most of the sugar that's in the chocolate milk, or the flavoured milk, um, goes out in the way anyway. It doesn't really stay in the cheese. Um, and most of those flavoured milks are all ultra pasteurised. So rarely do they set a curd. So they may be some of the issues that you would have if you did try that. Um, Ruth says um, that she wants to buy Dietrich's book, Dr. Casero. Um, um, she, <laughs> she even knows Spanish. <laughs> Go and get your car, Ruth. All righty. Um, Joaquin says, uh, do you produce cheese? Oh, I make cheese. I don't sell it per se. So there are no cheeses for sale um, at my cheese store. Just, uh, yeah, oh, okay, right. So yeah, so there's no cheeses at the store. Um, I don't have a, a shop front or anything like that. I'm not allowed by law here in Australia to make my own cheese. I don't have the relevant licenses and all that sort of stuff. So no, I only produce it for myself, my family, and um, and friends who won't sue me. <laughs> uh, but that's why I make it for you know all, all the online videos because people can then um, uh, make it themselves. So that's that's why I teach it. All righty, uh, Jim has a question. Did I get Jim? No, I got Patricia. It bounced. All right, sorry, Jim first. Um, Jim says, I am considering a brie or camembert with raw cow's milk. I would like to age it 60 days. Uh, will I run into cheeses that are over ripened? Can I get some? Uh, I can get some good pasteurized if need be. Um, you will find that the brie will probably be okay at 60 days, maybe a little bit less. So, normally, camembert or that smaller style bloomy rind cheese is mature within four weeks uh, unless you do a uh, stabilized paste version Jim and then yeah aging for 60 days will be no problems and then it'll be soft in the middle um, but if you do the normal camembert if you've seen the raw milk camembert video that I did it turned out quite runny um, and that was at about 45 days I think so yeah something to watch for there um, they will over ripen if aged that long. Um, Patricia says, uh, Gavin, if you ever remake Appenzella style, try mixing with some of that Aussie pickling spice with the mead wash. Those juniper berries would make a truly amazing cheese. Yeah, indeed. That's a, that's a good idea. Uh, they will. If, if soaked, I think the flavour will be quite good. Um... Uh, well, I don't know what this is. Joaquin, how much money to legally change your name to Meatball Marvin for the rest of your life? No amount of money, obviously. Um, 
So we've got, I've run out of questions. Why is that? Why is we run out of questions today? Keep asking questions unless I've missed one. Have I missed any? No. Um, all good. Um, Krogan Love says I'm, I'm late to the show. That's okay. Um, the show has only just got started. All righty. Um, what I might do is do the gallery uh, now because we can. Um, so let's get into that. Let me can find the... Where is it? So we're just trying to get everything working and hopefully it doesn't crash the stream. Right, so here we go. Gallery, 10 minutes early, because uh, we can, um, because there aren't that many um, questions today for some reason. Anyway, so first one off, first gallery photo. Rightio. Looks like we're back again. The software's not playing properly. Okay. So it looks like we're okay now. Sorry about that. We had some technical difficulties again. Keep saying that the stream's going. Rightio. So we got the connection back again. I don't know what's going on and why it's doing it. Just keep saying that the bit rate keeps dropping and all sorts of uh, weird things going on. Anyway, so first cheese today is, as I said, from Jesse Lavinge. Thank you, Jesse. I'll just read this bit out. It says, greetings, Gavin. A little over two months ago, I asked you about inserting a layer of honey in my Colby cheese after your suggestion uh, that I rub the cheese with honey instead. I follow that process. Also soak the curds in black tea before pressing. Here's how the final product turned out. I love the colour. It looks really nice all the way through. Um, it says, I'm sure you'll notice the mechanical holes. Uh, I assume they have resulted from a lighter than typical pressing. I felt that I was squeezing too much out of the tea, out of the cheese and reducing my pressing weights to compensate. The honey formed a solid, almost plasticky rind, but didn't add much sweetness at it as I had hoped. Uh, I did get some lovely aromas of vanilla and spices from the tea. The Colby tanginess was a little stronger than I'd hoped for. I'm considering applying a similar amount of used milk manchego in the spring. Uh, oh, sorry, I'm considering applying a similar treatment to used milk Manchego in the spring in the hopes of a creamier and sweeter flavour. Still, it's a very chaste, uh, tasty cheese. Okay, so that's cheese number one. And that looks absolutely fantastic. As far as the manic mechanical holes are, it never worries me. I do them. <laughs> I get do them all the time. Okay, so the next photo, and this is from Jesse again. It says, I also have an image of a weak old sherv. Um, it is a lot like store-bought sherv but I think it must have a higher fat content based on the way it coats the mouth. It's delicious. I'm really pleased with the fine texture as well. Um, ultimately, they made wonderful additions to my cheese board. Let's, can we make that bigger? There we go. There's the cheese board. And the cheese board's up the back. And these cheeses are the ones that Jesse's made. It says, th my, all my thanks for the guidance you provide, Jesse. Thank you, Jesse. That's fine. That's lovely. All right, so the next cheese is from Lindsay. There we go. There's a couple, three, three cheeses there. There we go. So that's from Lindsay. Um, Lindsay said, just put together a platter for my parents-in-law uh, using my latest camembert and your recipes for Bel Paese at four months and Cotswold at 10 months. The made by cow cheese is superb, plenty of flavour, um, having half the culture, although pricey, it is worth the spend. Uh, thanks again for your recipes and encouragement, Lindsay. 
No problems, Lindsay. They look lovely. I think there's another photo. There we go. There's the camembert style there. Um, I love the paste. Beautiful around the outside, a little bit pasty or chalky in the middle, and that's just spot on. So, so good. Um, and we've got a super chat going on. We'll get to that straight after the, um, the gallery, Tracy. Thank you so much. We'll get to your question first. All righty. Uh, yeah, that made by cow milk. Uh, so that made by a cow milk, Lindsay, is is quite good. Um, I really do rate it and, uh, yeah, it works well and does produce a good cheese. If you have the cultures, I find that um, uh, that it works just as well. So there are still some enzymes left in that. Okay, so the next uh, one is from Michael. Michael sent these in, I think, this morning. It says, hi, Gavin, I had a busy week. My wife, Jenny... Uh, made some camembert and halloumi and I made one of your recipes of cheddar and green peppercorns. Thanks, Michael. So these are Jenny's cheeses, these three camemberts here, looking nice in the cheese fridge. And some halloumi there. That looks absolutely fantastic. Just perfect. Love the mint. Uh, and this one is from Michael. So this is the cheddar with green peppercorns. We had a conversation during the week on whether he should sanitise them or not, but they were from a jar, so they were already sanitised by the canning process, so that was all good. Um, but a nice weight, so press weight, 1.3 kilos. Uh, the packed weight is 1.228 by the looks of it, ready in three to six months, ready in November. I'd love to see a picture of it cut, Michael, once you've Goodness me, this is just getting crazy. So, uh, yeah, sorry about the dropout again. Hopefully we're back live. Um, so the next picture, and I haven't missed any, you haven't missed any. Uh, this one is from Tim. Thank you, Tim, for sending this in. These are uh, pictures of my petite Munster. Um, I have just unmolded them. I'm not sure if I'm going to wash them with brandy and attempt my version of an epoir-like cheese. Uh, and, or if I'm going to just wash them with brine solution and go the Munster route. I'll let you know how they turn out in eight to 10 weeks. By the way, if I wash it with the brandy rather than the Brevi bacteria solution, will it still develop the orange reddish uh, smear from the Brevi? Also, I doubled the recipe to get this amount of cheese. Yeah, doubling the recipe is no issue. Um, if you put brevibacterial linens in the curds, uh, sorry, in the milk at the start, uh, yeah, it should start to smear. But what I do recommend is the first, uh, so wash number one to three, um, make a, a brine solution with some brevibacterial linens in it. So just a, a pinch. Um, and then you will find, um, Tim, that that will start the brevi bacteria smear off. So then when you do it with brandy after that, you've got an established colony on the outside of your cheese and you, you won't have any problems. So, all righty. Um, I think that is it for the gallery. I know we were early. I'm terribly sorry about that, but we've got some more questions to get stuck into it. Um, so let's just get rid of that. There we are, I'm back. It's all working. Uh, and as promised, the super chat, I'll just make the light flash again for you, Tracy. There we go. All righty. That was, that was Gav's effort. Thank you very much for the $5 super chat. Your question is, can you make cheese using powdered whole milk? Well, um, you can make a Franken cheese. There are There is a video on YouTube where somebody made mozzarella or quick mozzarella with powdered milk, but they added a whole bunch of other things. So... Not only they used powdered milk, they added cream, they added butter. Oh, that was for the gallery, but we've already done that. Um, so butter, they added a whole flour, a whole bunch of other stuff to get this thing that kind of looked like quick mozzarella. But normally, no. Um, even using um, the best powdered milk you can find, it, it just won't set a curd. 
uh, when you rehydrate it. So unfortunately, no, you won't be able to make many cheeses at all with powdered milk. It has to be fresh milk and the fresher, the better. So sorry about that. Anyway, yes, yeah, so um, um, yeah, so sorry for those dropouts and stuff. I don't know what's going on with the software. I don't think it's the the router, um, Robert. It's um, yeah, it's this software for whatever reason. As soon as I add another thing into the stream, so like the pictures or the sound, it seems to just drop out for whatever reason. It says it's then reconnecting. So. I saw it starting to happen last week as well. I think it happened once or twice, but uh, if it does that, then what we may have to do is um, just go straight back to a YouTube stream um, using some other stuff. And I won't be able to show the comments, which will be bad, but yeah, I'm sure there's some other, some other solutions out there, but uh, we'll persevere today and see how we go. Um, Okay, um, so Tim says, um, I never saw any cheese other than the first one. Uh, yeah, they popped in and out. Hopefully they were all there um, and everybody saw that. Um, <laughs> Titus says, my technical assistant needs to be spankled. Uh, yeah, well, that'd be me. So, yeah, anyway, so they look amazing. Um, hopefully you got to see all of them there. Um so we've got a question from Glenn and uh, Glenn says, if young cheese is covered with dried spices or herbs, how long does it take for the herbal notes to soak into the cheese? Um, well, they don't really, young cheeses are eaten fresh usually, Glenn. Um, so if you're planning to uh, mature them or anything like that, then you may get some kind of mold growth from the dried herbs and spices i tend to rehydrate them in uh, and boil them in some water and then add that water into the milk to get more flavor out into the cheese um so yeah that's uh that's kind of what we do there but um i think if you leave them to rest once you've you know put the spice and stuff on them um for a couple of days i don't think that'll cause any to any harm but yeah um spice is definitely soaking pretty quick um they don't go very far into the cheese and herbs just kind of sit there. So, yeah. Anyway, <laughs> hopefully that all works for you. Um, Patricia says, made by cow milk. So envious of the Aussies for your access to that stuff. Yeah, I think they they've actually, I saw, Patricia, that they've done a funding round because of the rapid expansion that they've done in, uh, in processing here in Australia. So maybe they'll license it to other companies, the process that they've developed. But yeah, the milk is lovely. It really is. And it does set an amazing curd. All righty. Um, uh, Crispy McChicken says, how much money would it cost me to get into cheese making? Um, well, look, you can make the most basic of cheeses in your home kitchen. Um, and when I first started out, I probably spent about, geez, um, I think it was about $50 tops. And that was just on a mold and some cultures. Um, but if I had to go on the fresh cheese route, then I probably would have only needed rennet, maybe a cheesecloth. But yeah, cheap as, so probably under $50 to get started. But once you get um, really into it, which most people do seem to, um, and want to try different cheeses, then you know, you're looking at a kit, probably about $100, $120 Australian, which is about what, $90 US, something like that, um, to get started. So once you've got your first kit, it's got most stuff in it. Um, you may need to make a press or buy a press. Um, but yeah, then the other expense is the, um, the ripening fridge. Um, so the cheese cave or whatever we call it there. Um, and that is a, you know, you can get them secondhand or gifted or whatever. Just need an external thermostat to make sure it sits at about 13 Celsius and you're good to go. So, look, it all depends on how uh, ingenious you are on uh, scrounging. And, um, and yeah, you can get secondhand cheese gear uh, in quite a few other places as well. So, I reckon about $100 to get started with the kit and then off you go. 
Uh, and obviously there's the ongoing cost of the milk uh, and ingredients as you use them. Um, Hammerhead Chef says, uh, question, would you, would love to see you give Form Dombear another shot? Any plans on a new recipe or how about something semi-hard out of the Pyrenees? Um, good suggestions. I don't know if I'd do Form Dombear again. I don't know what happened there. It didn't really work out as well as I wanted it to. But I have had other people make use the same recipe and have far better results than what I did. So um, I, I don't know if I'll repeat that one. But anything out of the Pyrenees, I actually did do a Pyrenees-style cheese way back in the day. It was one of the very first videos. I think it was the third or fourth video. It was a Pyrenees cheese with peppercorns. Amazing, great flavor. So you could give that a try, Tim. Um, uh, next question is from Ty. Hello, Ty. Lovely to see you. After the runner, I often have an uneven curd, a set curd where the top is solid and the liquid at the bottom. Uh, I try and mix top to bottom and still the milk. Do you have bad, do I have bad rennet or is there another problem? Yeah, I've never heard of that before. Um, and I've never seen it before. Um, so if, as long as, look, so when I add the milk, the only way to distribute the rennet evenly, as far as I can tell, uh, is to make sure that you're stirring the milk as you add the rennet. So stir it, and that way it distributes it all the way through the milk. I always get a solid curd set all the way through. So I've never had that problem whatsoever, so I don't know how to fix it. Sorry, Ty. Um, but yeah, so just make sure that it's diluted in um, non-chlorinated water. So you can't use water out of the tap because the chlorine affects the way the rennet works. So it has to be filtered water or bottled water without any chlorine in it. Um, so definitely that could be half the issue. Maybe your rennet's not working as well as it should be. Do you have bad rennet? Look, you could try and buy some more um, that's, uh, that's fresher, then uh, give that a go. Maybe there's not enough rennet in there. Uh, could be the other solution. Depends on the strength of the rennet you've got. I use uh, rennet that's um, IMCU 200, which seems to be the standard throughout Europe. Uh, in the US, the single strength rennet seems to be um, seems to be about uh, 280 IMCU. IMCU stands for International Milk Coagulation Units. It's the strength of the rennet. Uh, tablets are a lot, lot stronger, uh, rennet tablets, because they're concentrated, of course. And then there's double strength rennet, which is about 400 IMCU. Um, so, yeah, it depends on the strength of your rennet. Check the instructions on the packet uh, or the bottle. It should have some on there. Um, so I hope that helps, mate. Alini says, uh, hi, Gavin, and thanks for the great work you share. I have access to organic goat's milk uh, only, and I experiment with different types of cheeses, even if they are normally made with cow's milk. I, something, Facebook cut it off. Um, is there a repeat? Let's have a look. No, there's no more information. So... Uh, I don't know what the question, the rest of the question. Can you put the rest of the question in there, Alini, and I'll get to that. Um, Krogan Love says, I saw them. I think you mean all the pictures. All right, cool. Well done. Thanks, mate. Um, Lucas says, uh, this is so rich knowledge. Thank you so much. Every week, there's this rich knowledge coming your way. So don't you worry about that. Um Next question is from Jordo. Let's have a look. Where is it? There it is. Hi, Gavin. Hope you're well. Taking care of six weeks old Castle Blue and two of them are getting very soft while the other two are pretty firm. Same batch happened last batch. Any idea why? Uh, no, not really. <laughs> uh, very hard to diagnose something like that. Uh, if they're all in the same ripening box, then they all should ripen fairly roughly at the same time. Um, the softer ones I would now wrap in um, in foil, aluminium foil or silver wrap, micro perforated wrap and put them in the kitchen fridge so they don't ripen any faster. Uh, the firmer ones, you know, let them ripen in the cheese fridge. I don't think there'd be any issue with that. 
But what happened? Don't know. I couldn't tell unless I saw you actually make them, Jordo. Um, all righty. Um, Cheryl says, uh, besides mozzarella, what is the best melting cheese? Any cheese that's high in fat, um, Cheryl, will melt well. Uh, so any pasta filata cheese, of course. Um, but cheeses like um, the Alpine style cheeses like Gruyere and um, even that Appenzella that I made, the um, uh, what else? Uh, any Swiss style cheese, so um, uh, uh, Emmentaler. Sorry, brain's going mushy. Emmentaler that that melts like a dream. Yalsberg, I think, gives a lovely nutty flavour, but definitely uh gruyere um raclette Whew. tell you what that swiss cheese just goes off like a frog in a sock and that is so melty um and if you do get yourself some raclette or make some raclette then give raclette potatoes a try we i actually made a video where uh the family and uh, and some friends uh, sat down and we had this little uh, thing we got from I don't know where we got it from but um, it was a thing called a party clet and you put raclette cheese slices of raclette cheese in this little thing and it heats up with tea light candles and it melts all your cheese and then you throw it on your your spuds on your boiled potatoes and oh, my goodness wasn't it lovely um, but yeah um, Titus says Oaxaca melts well so yeah well that's a, a pasta falada cheese as well so yeah that does melt well uh, I hope that answers your question, Cheryl. Next question is from Cease. Says, tardy to the party. Goodness me, Cheryl. Uh, Cease, sorry, Cease. Cheryl, where did I get Cheryl from? That was the last person. Sorry, Cheryl. Um, Cease, I uh, have to go back and listen from the start morning all. Uh, indeed, you would. Uh, Mary says, uh, what would be a what would be good to make as a beginner? There's a video on that. If you go to the channel and search, Beginner's cheeses, um, then, yeah, you will find a whole video on all those sorts of cheeses on the channel. Um, uh, Titus says, uh, you may want to use some calcium chloride in the milk. Ah, yes, yes, of course. How did I forget that? Uh, that was from the question from Ty, I think, um, where the, uh, the milk didn't set properly. So, yeah, if there's not enough soluble calcium in the milk as well, if you're using pasteurized homogenized milk, then, yes, yeah, sometimes the curd set doesn't happen as well. And there's not enough soluble calcium in the milk to form the casein matrix, which forms cur makes curds and whey. Um, yeah, so add some calcium chloride, uh, like all my recipes do. If you have already, then it's rennet shrink. Uh, okay. Uh, ch -ch -ch. And where else? Next question. Um, Patricia says, Raclette makes an amazing grilled cheese sandwich. Ask me how I know. Uh, probably because you made some, but yeah, cool. Um, Bill says, you may need some coffee. Yeah, look, I do. I've run out. The Curd Nerd Cup. Even the autofocus is, well, I'll cover my face. There we are. There we go. Oh, why don't you take the face away? It actually flew. So the Curd Nerd Cup is empty. I drank it too fast. So, yes, Bill, I need some coffee. Um, Titus says that the best um, the best melting cheese is American processed cheese. Yeah, I suppose. I'm not really into that, but I did make something before. And uh, Glenn says, yes, and so does very old Howder does make an amazing um, uh, grilled cheese sandwich, melty. So it's very cool. Um, there's a question from Edward says, I've been cooking some traditional Roman pasta cheese uh, dishes, um, carbonara, cacio el pepe, pepe, uh, la grisia. I hope I'm saying them right. Using Parmesan and Pecorino to make emulsified sauces. Have you done any videos cooking with your cheeses? Uh, I did some videos, um, but they weren't very popular uh, as far as cooking um, 
so I did uh, some risotto. Uh, there's been a few others. I can't. It was cooking with cheese. I got a. There's a playlist on the channel somewhere. The cooking with cheese one. Um, some desserts I've made from um, French cream cheese, some cheese logs, cheese balls, that sort of stuff. Um, so they're just a few that I remember off the top of my head without any more coffee. But um, and uh, like I said, this week we're going to have Swedish cheesecake, which is actually made with fresh curds. So um, yeah, it's uh, it's it's very cool. But yeah, there are some videos there. We got a, another super chat, and that's from Cheryl. Thank you, Cheryl. It says um, twenty dollars. Cheryl, you're so generous. Thank you so much. Uh, oh my God! I just noticed you were in a hoodie. It's a hundred and one in Florida tonight. Uh, is it too hot to make cheese? Uh, if you're making it in an air-conditioned kitchen, um, Cheryl, then there's no issue whatsoever. Uh, it'll be fairly cool. But I kind of do a voice when it gets to a hundred and one. That's Fahrenheit, which is about thirty-nine Celsius here, which is quite hot. Uh, we do get those temperatures in summer. No problems at all here. Um, I do uh, tend not to make any cheese. Just it, not only because the cheese, the sorry, the curd, the milk, <laughs> the milk would be too warm. It'll it'll get away from you if the kitchen's that hot. Then yeah, don't. It's not not good for anybody. Even building builders and uh, tradies here in Australia don't work over thirty eight degrees. They all go home and sit in the air conditioning. Um, so yeah, I wouldn't make cheese at that temperature. Um, Put the cheese, put the milk in the fridge, and wait until it gets a bit cooler. Or make it at night. There's a suggestion when it gets a little bit cooler. But yeah, no, don't make it when it's that hot. It's not good for you, uh, and it's not good for the cheese either. Um, Mary says, <laughs> "What's your all-time favourite cheese?" Uh, all together now, regular viewers. All the cheeses are my favourite cheese. Every one, all of them. I haven't had a cheese I haven't liked. Uh, except maybe Kasu Mazu. I would never eat maggot infused cheeses. Terrible. Um, Bill says, You're finally getting some rain here in Texas after many days without rain. Hopefully it starts to cool down there too, mate. Um, um, questions keep coming in, which is great. What time is it? Uh, 8 47. We've still got 13 minutes to go. Uh, yes, great. Um, <laughs> that would make a good TV series, wouldn't it? Cheese making after dark. But yes, yeah, do it at night time. Make sure they're quick cheeses. <laughs> they're going to take all night. Then maybe that won't be so good. Um, uh, Bean Brothers says, Gavin, how are you alive when it's 36 out? How the heck? Because it's not 36 here. I'm in the Southern Hemisphere. It's winter. My goodness. Um it is eight degrees Celsius here, which is, I don't know what Fahrenheit. Um, but yes, that's I'm wearing a hoodie. That's because. Um, <laughs> what's the next? <laughs> well done, Cheryl. All the cheeses. Yeah, I love it. Um, such a shortage of questions today. Maybe you have taught us all too well, Gavin. Maybe that's what it is, Patricia. Maybe I need to add in another little segment like the uh, the photo gallery. Um, so I don't know. Um, yeah, I'll have a think. If anybody's got any suggestions for another segment during the one hour show, that would be really cool. So throw them into the chat and uh, I'll write them down and we'll see how we go. Um, but yes, I think we need another segment there. And Patricia, you're probably right. I probably have taught you all too well. <laughs> and you all know the question and it's only the one or two newbies that come along uh, and join the show uh, and um, uh, and yeah, that, that don't know. And that's why we have the same questions every so often. And I don't mind. I love answering people's questions. And uh, as you see in every single chat, there's no question that I don't answer or give a red hot go anyway. Um, uh, Karen says that uh, two words that should never be used in the same sentence, no and cheese. <laughs> Indeed, I love cheese. Um, and uh, I think the penny dropped for Bean Brothers, yes. 
All righty. So Crispy McChicken has another question. It says, what problems do you most often get whilst making cheese? Problems. Look, in the early days, it was the quality of the milk. Honestly, it was. I was using store-bought milk, pasteurised, homogenised. And I can tell you now, the curd set was never as firm as I wanted it to be. Um, the homogenization process breaks up the fat globules in the milk with cow's milk. Uh, and it doesn't make a very good curd. And uh, pasteurization doesn't help either. It destroys some of the soluble calcium in the milk. So when you're adding Rena, it, it doesn't form that casein matrix as it should um, without the addition of calcium chloride, which is just a simple mineral salt. It's nothing to be worried about. Um, it's in so many foods. Uh, if you've ever had a dill pickle, that's got calcium chloride in it to make it crisp. Um, it's called pickle crisp is another name for calcium chloride if those who don't know um, but um, yeah so uh, milk was the big issue uh, up the start so getting the right milk well not the right milk getting a quality milk is always an issue up start up the front and if you have to pay a few dollars more per litre then do it honestly if you get good quality milk if you can get raw milk even better um, but you'll have to adjust the recipes if you use raw milk. Uh, use like um, 25 to 50% culture, less culture, because there are lactic bacteria present in the raw milk already, and use about 25% less rennet. Um, and you'll find that the, the cheeses turn out uh, a lot nicer. They won't be as sharp um, because of the extra culture that's in them. But yeah, great question. Um, so yeah, milk was the big issue with me. Sanitization is something that um, a lot of people forget to do or don't do properly in the early days. You have to be meticulous with your sanitization um, or you will get all sorts of unwanted molds and yeasts on your cheese or in your cheese. So anyway, we'll move along. Uh, and as um, Jim has said, we appreciate all the questions. Indeed, uh, no question is too um, too easy to answer. So yeah, I look, I love doing it. <clears throat> um, Tracy says, "New segment: cheese jokes." Uh, there's Stiltons to get through. <laughs> Indeed, look, I can do cheese jokes. Uh, I have many cheese jokes that I've got. I've got books on the subject. In fact, I've got. Where the heck is it? Here we are. There's a good one. Yeah, we could do that. I've got, well, they're not playing cards. There we go. Does that focus? Really immature cheesy jokes. I've got 100 cheese jokes in here. Maybe we can do that. <laughs> good suggestion. Love it. Thank you, Tracy. Cheese jokes. I'm going to write that down before I forget it. Cheese jokes. Cool. All right, done. Um... Uh, John says, have you had poutine? What is your favourite uh, spicy cheese? So poutine, yes, I've made some. If you go and have a look, there's a video called Squeaky Cheese Curd. Go and check that out. It works. Um, and I even made some great, uh, some chips. And we'll put, what are they called? What do you call them? French fries. Um, but we call them hot chips here in Australia. Great name for them. Um, we have potato chips, which are the crispy ones. You're going to pack it. And we have a hot, hot chips like fish and chips. Uh, so I made some of those in a, a, a gravy, put the, the, the squeaky curds on the chips and put the gravy on top. Lovely. Probably not as um, cool as the stuff in Canada, but it was good nonetheless. Uh, Bill's got a good suggestion, says new segment might be cheese recipes. Yeah, um, yeah, not a bad suggestion. I'll put it down, but I don't know how to do it, but we'll figure that out. Cheese recipes. Might be hard to share. I don't know if I could read one, but uh, yeah, good suggestion. Thank you, Bill, for that. Um, is there connection, Titus says, is there connection between Munster cheese and all smelly cheeses and foot fungus? Well, funny you should say that. Um, uh Yes, Brevi bacteria linens is actually found between your toes. <laughs> uh, so the theory goes, and this is, I don't know if this is made up, that monks back in the Trappist monks who first developed some of these um, washed rind cheeses accidentally dropped their socks. I don't know if they had socks, who knows? Or they put their feet in the milk, who knows? 
Um, and that's how we end up with uh, brevibacterial linens. It does naturally occur in the environment as well, but there is a, a good concentration um, in between your toes. That's why you get smelly feet and smelly socks and that sort of stuff. Um, so I'm not sure what, what went on there, but yeah, that there is a correlation because it is found on humans as well. There you go. Uh, Cheryl says, Gavin dancing. Uh, no, there'll be no dancing going on, Cheryl. Thank you very much. Um, uh, Cheryl says, next month, I will be sending photos of one-year-old Parmesan. Very nice. I look forward to that. Um, Lauren has a, a joke, I think. Did that come up? Lauren, there we go. Lauren, a tornado destroyed a French cheese factory. All that was left was debris. <sighs> Lols. Um, Glenn has a question. There we go. Uh, I am curious about temperature difference, differences as the curd is being developed. What would be the difference, for instance, if you allow the cheese to develop at, say, 10 degrees lower than the recipe calls for? Okay, so the higher the temperature, so mesophilic and thermophilic starter cultures have optimum ranges for them to chew through the lactose and create lactic acid. So um, mesophilic culture starts off around about 20, oh, 23 degrees Celsius, roughly, that's the low point, and up to about 38 degrees Celsius. I won't do Fahrenheit because I'm not converting. Um, so, uh, the, but the lower the temperature, the slower the, um, the lactic um, uh, activity. With thermophilic, it's between about 40 Celsius and 52 Celsius. Uh, a lot higher thermophilic being, you know, warm or hot. Um, and um, yeah, so that, that has activity at higher temperatures. But the, the mid-range for that is about 44 to 45 degrees Celsius, depending on the thermophilic. Um, but if you allow them to develop less, you'll get less acidity. So basically, that's the answer to the question, Glenn. There we go. Uh, three minutes left. Um, Helen, hello, Helen. Lovely to see you. Uh, thanks for the made by cow tip, Gavin. Um, resuming after a long break. Great to see you on there. And as... Patricia has said, hit that thumbs up. Um, I hear Gavin will dance if he gets enough likes. Oh, goodness me. Uh, yeah, righto. Um, but yeah, likes are cool. Thank you so much. Um, uh, okay. Um, oh, here's a, here's a good one. Jim says, whiskey yeast is said to have originated under fingernails. Well, there you go. All righty. And, um, yep, we're just about to finish the screen. A stream. Hi, Shannon. How are you? And uh, you're currently making some feta. Enjoy. Hopefully that turns out all right. Um, okay. So uh, that's the end of the show. Thank you, everybody, for turning up. I appreciate uh, you asking questions. Yes, at the start, they were a little bit slow, but now we've got hundreds of them. So, um Thank you so much, everybody. I really appreciate it. Um, appreciate everybody's questions. Uh, and sorry for the slight technical difficulties. Hopefully, they won't be back next week. It wasn't me. It was the software. <laughs> all my video stuff seems to work perfectly. Seems to work all right. Um, hopefully, the sound was okay and all that sort of stuff. So, I hope you learned lots today. And don't forget to be here next week. Uh, we will be here same time same channel all that sort of stuff same back channel um and uh yeah i'll be here to answer your questions but yeah shoot in the oh last i won't before we hopefully this works um yeah let's uh see how we do the gallery and all that sort of stuff so how to send photos to me so let's share the screen and hopefully this works and we don't get a drop out all right here we go so um, we go to the channel. So we go find Gavin Weber, the channel, uh, and we go to the About tab. And down here where it says Details, you can only do this on um, in a browser. I don't think it works on iOS or um, Android phones. But yeah, down here it says Details for Business Inquiries, view the email. And because I'm logged on, you'll see the email and then you click that. Um, and there may be even a little capture 
thing before you can send it. But there, there's the email address. Shoot that through. Uh, any photos? Um, not so many questions. Leave them for this segment. But yeah, photos, fantastic. And, uh, and we can show them uh, during the show. Uh, one other thing I'd like to show you is the tiers of membership that we now have. Uh, if you hit the join button, uh, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, six new tiers, uh, some new icons for uh, loyalty badges, but each different tier has uh, a different perk. Um, so most people at the moment are on the young tier. Uh, the young tier gets um, uh, membership shout outs and early access to cheese making videos. And then it goes up in uh, all the way to Old Bitey, which is $40 Australian a month. It'll be in your currency. Um, so you'll get all these different perks and then you get 50% off everything on the merch store. Um, I send through a coupon for the Old and Bitey. Anyway, so that's, um, that's everything there. Hopefully uh, you got some value out of today and uh, the stream hasn't gone all funny or anything. But uh, we will see you next week. So um, until then, uh, stay cheesy and uh, make cheese. Bye.